here I have a control unit from a home heating unit. Uh, my brother wanted me to take a look at this. He uh, had his heating system installed back in 93 and since then uh, he's went through two of these and was about to go through his third one but instead of ordering it or having a service guy come in I took a look at his second one for him which is the one that's in his, in his heating unit now and we was able to get that one running and we put it back in back in uh, 2014 I think it was and it's been running fine ever since then so about four years and uh, so this was his first one that he had replaced so I figured we'll take a look at this one and see if we can't do the same thing with this one that we did with the second one which was uh, repair some bad solder joints that happened because of uh, components heating and cooling in the control box itself so we'll take this one apart and uh, see if we can find if it find the same problem that we did in the other one you can see the model number here is a G891 TCA-8103 and this come out of a uh, Linux Pulse uh, heating unit so if you have one something like that or a circuit board that's accessible uh, it might be able to be uh, repaired by somebody you know that has uh, electronics experience and if not then uh, you'll have to pay to have another one put in if your uh, system stops working uh, his quit working, just would not heat the house. He would wake up freezing his butt off in the winter time. And it cost him, uh, I think, $250 for each time he was going to replace this. So he paid $500 for two of them. But before he spent another $250 to buy, buy another one of these, we fixed his second one. And it's been working fine for over about four years now. So uh, we're going we're gonna to try to see if we can fix this one for him and have it as a backup. Uh, for his system. The one that he has in there now is still working but he had this laying around. I wanted to see if I could take a look at it and fix it like we did the other one. I have to be careful with this kind of stuff since this controls the heating, the gas and all that stuff in, in your house. If you don't feel comfortable doing this don't don't mess with it. Call a service person in to do it uh, to fix it for you. So the first thing we have to do to get this thing open is we have to drill out these uh, rivets, I guess, or whatever, collars that they have in there. They have, uh, if I can get this in the light right, they go all the way through. So they're crimped over on both sides, so you can't take this apart without drilling at least one side out. We're not going to drill all the way through, we're just going to drill this enough with a big drill bit to break off this top ring and once it falls off then we can move to the next one. This side will still be intact after we get done. So I have a drill here. That's, that's bigger, the diameter is bigger than that collar part there itself so once we get down to where this top part loosens up and falls off we'll be done drilling we're not gonna drill all the way through so I'll try to do that on the camera if that doesn't work then I'll do it behind the scenes and then bring it back to you and, and show you what it show you what it comes to be try not to uh, press too hard on that or anything when you're drilling this is the uh, this right here is uh, for the spark to start the gas on fire and then uh, of course you have your connector not sure what this is it might be a, uh, a like a fuse um, then we have an LED and then the flame sensor 
So let me start with trying to drill one of these out here. We'll see how it goes on, on camera here. So I'm to the point to where the whole thing is spinning. And you can see I got fibers all over here. So I need to hold I need to hold this somehow from spinning. If I can uh, get something in here. If I had a pair of pliers handy with me, I'd probably use those, but I right at the second I don't. So let me just try to put some pressure on there. So just like that, I just drilled the top piece and it's right there. So that's what we're going to do to all of those, the other three, to get this back cover off. Don't worry about the filings and stuff, we can, we can blow all the board out and everything later. We can blow it off and make sure there's no uh, filings on there or anything. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drill out the other ones. And again, I'm just going to keep going and then uh, if it's uh, getting to be too time consuming, then I'll just uh, I'll stop the video and I'll do it off, off the camera and then uh, bring it to you back on. the second one you can see how it's drilled out that's what the original looks like so so far two of them's good don't need to get all crazy on it and go full blast with the drill because uh, once it breaks through that uh, these little copper rivet bushing things whatever you want to call them it'll it'll get into that plastic and it'll suck that drill bit right down through there so you just want to be real careful and not press that hard just let it kind of slowly dig through there and you don't want to get hurt either if it uh, if it actually grabs and crams it right through there like it might be it. A lot of shavings down here. There's a little bit of a little bit of it still left on there. I'm gonna see if I can actually just pull the cover right over it. I might be able to. two of them. I don't want to break the box or break the plastic or anything. I'm going to drill this and I'll just a little bit more. Oop, there we go. Just took that little bit for that one to come out. 
try this one a little bit more. Oop, there's that one. So you can see how easy it is if you go past the point how far the drill went in eating that plastic up. So you want to be real careful. Just a slight bit of pressure and uh, of course keeping your fingers and everything out of the way too. So there we go. There's the circuit board. There's the cover. When we get done of course this is going to go back on there. Most likely we probably, I'm not sure, I don't remember if we reuse these just the way they are because this bolts into the system and our screws go right here. So we might be leaving those on there and just putting this back in there and then when we put our screws through there it'll hold this in there because we don't want to tighten the screws and then it just break the corners of these plastic here and we definitely got to have our ground on this one so the ground hits here and then it's also supposed to hit the uh, the metal on the furnace itself when you tighten the screw down so if for some reason that doesn't stick out far enough we can always the screw itself will sit here and go into the metal so that's considered grounded it doesn't have to have this little brass piece in there. So let's see what else we got to bend this to get our board out. Just be careful. Don't want to break that off. We have to get our circuit board over those little over the little brass pieces there. See how it just slips. So if you drill those out good enough, then the circuit board slips right out from them. And of course you always got to have one of them that's going to hold you up. But there we go, this might be it. There we go. So that's how we get that out of there. Clean up my mess here in a second. So here's the board. Looks in really good shape. It's uh, it has a clear coating over it. Uh, it's usually called conformal coat. It uh, protects the protects the components, protects the circuit board. And you can see they actually didn't did not put any conformal coating down at this end here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to take go through all these solder joints and take a look at them and see if uh, I can find any bad ones. And to do that, you can just take a uh, magnifying glass, uh, unless you have some bifocals on your glasses or however you want to do it. You can just look for any bad solder joints. Looking at uh, these first, this connector right here, I can see that this one here is cracked all the way around it. What I'll do is I'll have to uh, try to zoom into this somehow with uh, this magnifying glass and then I'll just post a picture in this video of it and uh, I'll post any other ones that I find if I find any. Um, so that was, the, that was the, the problem that we had to fix on the one that's in his furnace now is we fixed some bad solder joints and we put it in there and everything worked fine and it's continuing to work fine uh, approximately four years later. So 
like I said before, if you know anybody that knows about electronics, or if you have an electronic shop, maybe you can take it to them, let them uh, look at it for you. Uh, I don't, I can't say yes or no if they will or not, but uh, they're usually uh, sometimes they're uh, wired very heavily inside the furnace units. This one is easy. It has one connector and one connector up here and one connector here. I've worked on other ones that have connector connections all the way around the whole board. So you have to take plenty of pictures, make sure you know what you're doing, pay attention to what you're doing to get all those wires connected back up in the right in the right spot. So I'll take a break in this video right now and then uh, I'm going to go through and look at this whole thing and see if I can find anything else that might be wrong and then uh, and then I'll come back to you and uh, we may or may not put this in the furnace unit to see if it works uh, I'll have to uh, leave that up to my brother um, and let him decide uh, but if we do to test it out I'll uh, I'll record it and then uh, add it to the end of the video here but uh, that's it um, so far so I'll do that, see what I find, and then uh, I'll get back to you. The main parts that you want to touch up on this are these were the, the locations of these big blue resistors. They heat up a lot and the solder cracks around those legs. And uh, you, you, I pointed those out in the pictures uh, of some cracking or potentially cracking uh, solder joints. So what we're going to do next with this is uh, Put it back together, put it back in the case that it came out of, and then uh, I'll give a talk with my brother and uh, see if we can slip this one back in his uh, heating unit and uh, see if our indicator LED here gives us the, the right indication for the uh, uh, proper operation, which is it should be the green light is on for normal operation and we'll follow this chart to make sure that uh, it is right but it's from what it looks like if the green light stays on then this unit is operating correctly and of course if the furnace turns on and heats the house or cools the house whatever is connected to it uh, we'll see if that happens so it's, it's easy to put this back together just stick it in there kind of the way we took it out we're going to put those little uh, copper things back through the circuit board holes. Get this last stubborn one in here. So we 
have those through there. This cover back cover has a little notch in here. If you see right on the edge there, that goes in this little notch, the matching part there. So make sure you get that put together there, right? And again, we push that on there and push our little uh, copper pieces through the plastic. stubborn one there. That's through, that's through, that's through. Get this stubborn one back through here again. Because that's where the ground goes. There we go. Help it out a little. And there's our ground right there. So when we mount this back in the unit, we can uh, just put our screws through the four locations and that'll hold the whole thing together while it's in the unit. You can, from here to there, you can put tape on here just to hold it on there. It's no big deal, whatever, it doesn't matter. But uh, we'll put this unit in there and hopefully he'll let us want to try it. and. Uh, and I'll uh, I'll record what's going on so this way uh, you can see if uh, it actually turns on and our indicator LED lights up and stays on like uh, this uh, LED code section tells us. All right, so we'll see you then. So here I'm at my brother's house in front of his heater. It's a Pulse 21 by Linux. We're going to try that, uh, that controller out and see if, it, uh, if soldering the joints fix the problem. We're going to look at what the uh, working one looks like. And you can see our green light is on steady. So that's telling us that this controller should be working fine. And this is the one that I repaired. Uh, approximately four years ago and uh, it's been working fine ever since so instead of me being in front of the camera I'm gonna take this controller out and put the other one back in and then we'll uh, start recording again and see what uh, what the other one reacts like all right see you in a minute all right so we got the new controller board in there everything uh, plugs up real simple we got our main connector here, we got our spark wire here, and then we got our sense wire here. Our LEDs up here on the top, so I'm going to flip the on switch, and then we should see that come on steady, and then we'll uh, actually turn on the furnace and see if that uh, works. Okay, so our green light is on steady, so that's a good sign. So let's turn on the furnace now, and then we'll see if it uh, actually kicks in properly. My brother's upstairs, he's getting ready to turn it on. I hear clicking. I hear a, a motor, the exhaust fan or something kicking on. Light is still steady green, so that's good. Goes the fan, green lights flashing a little bit. Still waiting for the blower blower motor to kick in if it's gonna.
this part always takes a little bit before the, the blower motor kicks in. It's got to evacuate all the, the other old gas and everything out of the system. Here goes the fan now. So now the, the blower motor fan is working. So that looks like it's a go. It looks like everything is good. It looks like he has another spare uh, controller for if this uh, current one happens to fail. So it uh, looks like he'll be set for a while. Apparently, uh, he seems to think that he can't get this circuit board anymore. So uh, if, you, if you need this board repaired, I would, uh, I would definitely take a chance on it because otherwise you uh, might be replacing your whole furnace unit. All right, so that looks like a done deal. So uh, I guess we'll see you on the next one.